Hi y'all and welcome back to the garden. Notice anything a little different in this area? Uh, I came through this weekend. I did a lot of heavy lifting literally this weekend. I came through and removed all of the rocks, uh, the big rocks that were on edging the sidewalk on this side because it was no longer balanced with this one after I installed this brand new bed a couple months ago. And then Sunday I came through and dug up or scraped up all of this gravel that was in this space and I've used up all of my mulch so I'm going to have to get some bag mulch to finish the sidewalk and behind these boxwoods. I also trimmed my boxwoods. Now our first freeze is tonight uh, so it will be below freezing. We've had a hard frost already but we've not had a hard freeze and it'll be getting probably below 32 this tonight so would i recommend you prune your boxwoods the weekend before that happens absolutely not uh, but time was not on my side and i was not able to get that tackled uh, earlier in the season like last month when i wanted to so typically you will need to give those a little time to harden off now i didn't cut them as hard as i wanted to i will probably come in in spring and shape them a little more but you can see they're much more rounder than the boxy shape that they were which i can show on the screen right quick uh, so i got those shaped i did shape the u's a little bit and i just trimmed the very edges of the big box wood over there to give it a little shape too you can see all the clippings on the ground so there is a lot of leftover and i'm just going to mulch on top of it uh, honestly and then it can decompose there underground with the rest of the mulch that i'm throwing on top uh, it has been a wild ride for the past week the geothermal is virtually finished and I'm going to answer a couple questions about it. So it is kind of windy today, so hopefully it's not too bad on the mic. So the thing about geothermal, someone was asking, well, how is this going to benefit you in the garden? It's not really going to benefit me in the garden. Um, geothermal is really interesting. If you don't know anything about it, it essentially eliminates um, your heating and cooling of the air outside, which is not really energy efficient. So they bury these loops in the ground. We did a open, no, we did a closed loop system. You could do an open loop system if you have wells on your property and in that case they dig new wells and they pump water up and then pump water back directly into a separate well and that's an open loop uh, we did a closed loop so it pumps they fill the loop with water the loops run outside of the house so they came in where all the other utility stuff is right here in this corner and they ran those pipes down the yard along this trench and dug six wells and the water runs down the well up the well in this tube and down the well and up the well and the next one and goes through all six of them and then the water is heated or cooled as it goes through those wells and comes back into the house. And so what you're doing, because water, um, groundwater, is essentially almost the same temperature all year, between 50 to 60 degrees, normally around 55 degrees, you're either cooling your house using 55 degree water or you're heating your house uh, from a higher temperature than is outside. So in the winter when it's 32 degrees, we'll be pulling heat from the water that's at least 55 degrees. So it is incredibly efficient. To give you an example, uh, yesterday we have had to turn on our heating um, yesterday to heat and cool our house. This weekend it costs us a dollar a day. Um, the app that is integrated with the furnace tells you exactly how many kilowatts you used and as it's pumping water through the furnace and the AC, depending on what you're running, will show you exactly a computation per day of every aspect of your entire system and how much you use. So it was like a dollar and five cents, I think, on Saturday and just over a dollar yesterday. So it's super energy efficient. Now that doesn't do a whole lot for the garden, but it is going to help end our reliance on propane in the future. So someone else was asking about how I intend to hide this propane tank. We had a big propane tank down by the barn. Uh, the propane company messed up and gave us a bigger tank than they were supposed to. So this is a temporary placement with a temporary line. Uh, in a couple weeks, they're going to come out and give us a 120 gallon tank that will go where the air compressor or the AC air compressor was right here on this concrete pad. So uh, that'll be good because I can put a little fence around it and hide it. And it's kind of in lieu of the air conditioner air compressor right there because our propane hookup is right there. And the reason we're keeping propane currently is because our stove is on propane and we have a backup 
fireplace that's propane so in the event the power goes out we'll still have a way to heat our house and cook with but the goal one day would be to have some backup battery process in place and have to end or could end some reliance on that propane and do away with the tank at all so this is temporary i think in the next two weeks they're going to come out and remove it and this is the trench that i'm left over with till spring now they didn't this is not extra dirt. This is the dirt that came out of the hole. So there's going to be a lot of settling over spring. They can't level this off. I guess they could, but then you'd left, be left with a big trench come spring. So it's already done some settling uh, and it's going to continue to settle over spring and what's left over in the spring and that hasn't settled because there'll probably be a little bit of a hump. Uh, I'll come through and scrape away with the tractor and then replant grass seed here or cover up with mulch. I probably will not get started on the project that I want to do in this space next year, but I'm moving right along pretty quickly with the heavy equipment tractor helping so much. So it's possible I could get some of this covered with mulch and start doing beds right here as well. Not necessarily in the plan for next year though but you'll notice all of the rock that i took out front from along the flower beds i brought all around and did these three tiers that i was talking about it's also been raining quite a lot so it's a muddy mess right now but i did a tier here and then i did the same tier here and so it's not like super sophisticatedly stacked stone i don't have the patience to do that uh, it was just a lot of heavy lifting on my part to somewhat match them up and make them look pretty good. I may come through and add like another layer here uh, and may make this one one more taller. I didn't do it so they can get the propane tank, the tiny one in next to the house um, in the coming weeks. And then after that's done, I can add another layer after it's more settled into this location. So that's a little update on those spaces. So you'll no longer see this in a couple weeks. I started to address it in the last video and I just didn't. And then someone ended up asking. Propane tanks aren't the prettiest thing to have on your property, but some of us who don't have access to uh, a natural gas, if you're heating with natural gas or some other method, um, they're necessary at least for some parts of the country. Also, huge thing is I got all everything planted. So the rest of my plugs you saw in those beds over there, I planted a lot of ferns. Um, there's some hellebores. I did get planted my feather false carrots in this location. So there's just a big splash of it right here next to this mugo pine that I planted. Uh, I think I may have showed you that in the last video. It's been about a week since I shot a video. Uh, and then I planted another splash of it over there. Uh, I've got planted all of my bulbs. I think I showed you in the last video. I didn't show you any of the varieties and I'll probably go over that in a separate video. Uh, they did, because we weren't the original owners to this house, the geothermal company happened to hit the power, the electrical to the barn last week when they were digging the trench. And so I was locked out of my barn uh, for a day or so. So there wasn't a ton of gardening that went on last week simply because I couldn't get access to it. Whoever built that barn originally uh, did not put a door access on it, a physical door. It's only garage doors. So that'll we'll be remedying that over probably the next few months so we can at least get access to it if the power happens to go out again. Um, but not a whole lot of gardening got done last week. It's also rained a ton. It's been super wet, which has been great for the garden as we've had a really dry past few months. Uh, but it has made working in the garden really difficult because although this soil is a little better um, than my last soil as far as clay content, it is still very goopy when it gets wet and we've had even the slightest bit amount of moisture on it. Um, and... That's just something I've had to deal with with my boots all weekend. I wanted to point out this parotia uh, that I picked up and planted a couple months ago from Browns. Look at this color. If you do not have one of these in your garden and if you can fit one, they don't get terribly big. It is gorgeous. It's both, I haven't seen a whole lot of trees that do the same color. So, you know, you have the yellow maples, you have the red maples, which all the leaves have almost fallen off all my maples because the wind's been so strong. But this parotia has, uh, I think it started yellow and now it's kind of transitioning to an orange red before the leaves even fall off. So this is a really gorgeous tree right here. It is leaning a little bit. Um, the trunk starts out straight and I think it's just the way it was grown. Uh, it's a little crooked. I may try and pull it a little slightly with the tractor 
and I may just leave it for some character. I'll probably go that route because I don't want to disturb it this late in the season. But you can see how interesting kind of the trunk is on this tree. Really, really beautiful thing though. I have put away some of my hoses. Uh, if you're having a freeze, make sure you unhook your water hoses so you don't damage any of the plumbing in your house. I put away some of my hoses and I typically put all of them away before the first freeze. But because I planted these big trees, I'm gonna leave some of my less expensive and um, the hoses that I'm not so like attached to outside a little bit longer so I can drag a hose and water some of these trees if I need to. Right now we're getting a pretty significant amount of moisture but these trees still need to be watered well until we have just completely into our cold weather. So I'm going to be unhooking the hoses tonight. At least make sure they're not attached to the house like this one's not. So don't get any damage over the night. I also just want to take a moment to show you the roses in the garden. I've only added a few. I'll be adding much more. Uh, next year and I've got some interesting news to share with you about that in a future video but for now a lot of the ones I have because we've had a really um, mild fall so to speak the weather's been fairly cool it's been a little dry but we've had an actual kind of fall which is nice I don't like when we go directly into just scorching heat directly into freezing uh, it's not good for the garden but it's not also good for me but these roses, these are the honey apricot that I've shared previously. Look at this pink uh, that it's exhibiting with this cooler weather. So roses are an interesting plant in the fact that temperature uh, can affect the bloom color on a lot of them. And you know, if you've been following me very long, you've seen that on my channel before, uh, the first roses of the season are somewhat maybe a little different in color than the second flush of roses. And in the fall, if you're continuing to get blooms, and we have because it's been putting on uh, a lot of growth this fall, the color also changes again as the temperatures change. So isn't this gorgeous? It also still smells really lovely. So that's still putting on lots of roses here. There's a trio a clump here. This one's got a little more yellow in it, but it's the same variety as this little pink orange here we got. So this is like quintessentially my favorite color palette of roses right here, all wrapped up together. A little yellow, a little orange, a little pink. But there's also another one from the Proven Winners Rise Up series, which they released over the past year. I think it may be, we're, we're approaching like two years from the announcement, I think, at this point. The Rise Up series is a collection of small climbers. And I had Rise Up Lilac Days in my last garden, and I planted it from a little four inch container I purchased from Great Garden Plants, and it blew me away in one season. It was so vigorous, it got at least four foot tall, if not four foot wide, in a season after being planted in the fall. Uh, the next year I got that big, and it just produced a prolifer proliferation of blooms. And there's another variety in the series called Rise Up Ember Rays, and I have several of those, and it has just continuously pumped out blooms since I planted them in this location. Uh, let me show you those right quick. They're a little more pink, a little more orange typically, but they're exhibiting this really nice pink color with the uh, dropping temperature. So we got a buds here. We'll see how hardy these buds are from the freeze we're gonna have tonight. It'll probably be okay protected next to the home here against this brick. But it has been producing, like you can see all the petals on the ground, a ton of buds. So I'm gonna be getting a trellis structure on this wall hopefully next spring. I wasn't focused on it this fall. I was focused on putting the budget towards other more necessarily needed items, but I'm hoping to get something custom made or find something uh, at least to string these up along the brick next spring. So if because if they're as vigorous as Rise Up Lilac Days, and if they, they appear to be so far, they're going to put on a ton of growth next year. Uh, and they are supposed to be smaller climbers, but I bet given enough room, they will just continue to climb and pump out blooms. So really successful variety just having been planted uh, a month ago in the ground here. Let's go take a look at one of the hydrangeas um, that I planted that I'm trialing for y'all um, in the garden in this shade bed over here because it's still pumping out blooms too. Let's just take a look at this bed in general. It's doing really well. So this is Tough Stuff Top Fun and it's still producing buds. 
uh, which is interesting this late in the year. The blooms, that are old, the older blooms are still looking really, really gorgeous. The fall color is pretty nice with this darker leaf. But back here is Let's Dance Lovable, and I'm gonna take you over there and show you that one because I'm super impressed that it just keeps churning out blooms uh, ever since it was planted. So this one right here is one of the ones that opened most recently. This one's just getting started. This one's just starting to open. And this one is also starting to open. And then it's putting on another one right here and another one. So we have already had our first hard frost. Uh, and this one's a little protected, obviously, next to the house, kind of under this tree. But I am super impressed with this variety. I showed you this one when I went to Michigan to the Proven Winners uh, Spring Meadow Nursery Color Choice Shrubs event. And it was just a ton of blooms all over it. And it seems to be doing re really well in my garden. Now we'll see in spring how quickly it pops back. If we're having an El Nino and it doesn't get as cold this fall or this winter, um, we should be pretty good to go and have lots of nice blooms in the spring. But if we don't, if we do have a rough winter which kills us buds, and it's possible since this is a newly planted plant, I can tell by how it's performing just being planted uh, this fall that it is going to produce more blooms really quickly for me. Like this is incredible to have a shrub this small producing this many blooms this late in the season. I mean, this week, the middle of the week is November, and it's still just trying as hard as it can. If any of you are local and know of any bag mulch deals, I'm going to need some more bags to finish up this front bed because I'm just not the type of person, it appears, that can leave things untended for winter. They need to be wrapped up. Uh, my personality just will not let this stay like this. Plus, I don't want to have, I mean, it's already producing a ton of weeds because these beds were not taken care of in prior years. If I leave it uncovered all winter, the weediness in the springs going to be a contender, certainly. So if you know of any local places that have mulch on sale in bags, uh, definitely drop it below. I have not seen this year, typically mulch goes on sale in the fall, and I didn't see that happen this year. Um, so I don't want to spend a ton of the budget on mulch just because I can't get access to bulk mulch right now that I like so much. Um, so if you're local, help me out there. All right, we'll wrap this video up next to this pretty evergreen or this pretty maple where I planted this like evergreen carex down here. It's partially evergreen, pretty, pretty good, does a pretty good job in our zone actually. Stay evergreen, I think it's called Everillo, um, maybe Evergold. The sedges, they all have very similar names. So, um, but I planted it out of this Japanese maple for a splash of color. And I need to throw some mulch on it as well. So thank you guys for joining me on today's video and this little garden update. I will talk with you soon. Take care. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light.